I was under heavy, heavy conviction. But I was saying, what did I do that, I was, that is different? I, I couldn't find anything that I had done in my life or allowed in my life that was different or inconsistent with my normal life. And I was convinced that in my normal life, I'm walking right with the Lord. Now, I couldn't put the works of miracles and signs and wonders that God was doing through our hands and the visions and the revelations he was giving us in sync with this kind of word and message that he was coming, constantly calling us to repentance and to come back to him. And somehow I didn't see how they connect. I was trying to deal with an act and he was trying to deal with my ways. He was not dealing with something I have done. He was still dealing with how I walk. I was serving him. I was seeing people getting saved. I was seeing churches being planted. I was seeing people healed and delivered. But God was saying, I want you to come out of your ways into my way. And I began to say, God, I am a sinner beyond what I understand. I don't even know how to repent. And I began to cry out, have mercy upon me. Give me the grace of repentance. Give me the grace of repentance. As I was crying like that, I felt the presence of the Lord come upon me. But then it increased, then it increased to levels I had never, never experienced before. And soon my heart was scared. I could feel it. It was like a heavy, heavy blanket coming upon me. Then he said to me, I knew you before the creation of the world. And I chose you and set your part to serve me as a witness in these last days. But I want to say to you, if I had come today to take my bride, you wouldn't be part of it. I wouldn't take you. I can't describe the shock that came upon me. I think I was in shock. I didn't even respond. It was like, to hit me. And he repeated it and said, I wouldn't take you. For it is written, he will appear to those who wait upon him. And said, you are not living your life as a person waiting upon me. You are allowing all kinds of filth to come into your life. You are living like one who cares not. I was feeling, this can't be happening to me. This can't be God saying to me, he wouldn't take me and all my theology and all my teachings could not accept that then he spoke to me these words written in the book of first corinthians chapter 6 do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters nor adulterers nor male prostitutes nor homosexual offenders no thieves, no greedy, no drunkards, no slanderers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And he went on to say to me, your life is so full of filth. You walk with an outward appearance and you cover a lot of things in your heart. You forget that I'm the Lord who examines the heart you are not ready you are not ready to meet me and he began to say your life if your life is full of this and this and this and this and this then are you ready for my appearance he said if your life is full of fornication and everything in me said oh no that can't be I said it in my heart and the voice stopped and for a moment there was silence then he said to me, there's no crooked word that comes out of my mouth. Do you call me a liar? I said, but because you don't even know your heart, I will show it to you. Remember this day when you're in this place at this hour. I saw myself seated in the taxi, waiting for the taxi to be this, like a, a cab to be filled. And then I was looking out at some lady with all kinds of filthy imaginations and the moment it came back I said oh God 
I have sinned against you. He said, no, you have not sinned. You live in sin. You live in that. You live from morning to evening in such imaginations. Even in your bed at night, you indulge in the same. I know every moment of your private life. I know your thoughts. You don't even fear. Even in church, seated in church, someone steps up on the platform to serve me and you strip them naked in your imagination. Haven't you read that even he who looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her? And he began to mention things that appear humanly small. The envy, the manipulation and undercutting one another so that you remain appearing, you are the best, you do the best, you preach better, you do the more miracles, you are the more anointed, and all the manipulations and self-promotions, all the grudges that we hold in our hearts when we see somebody else being promoted or being recognized before us, but the way the Lord brought it up, it was so filthy, so filthy. And at that moment, I thought of the miracles we were witnessing. I thought of the healings. I thought of all those wonderful things. And suddenly my heart sunk. I thought, the devil has so deceived me that he could even use me to produce counterfeit miracles. To produce things I thought God was working. And yet it was the devil all along. Then he said to me, why are you imagining such thoughts? I don't do miracles because you are worthy. I do miracles because I love my people before whom you stand to preach. But haven't you ever read when they will come to me on that day and say, in your name, we worked miracles. We cast out demons and prophesied. And then I'll say to them, get out of my sight, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Say, don't depend on the miracles to assess your worthiness. Your worthiness is not in the signs and wonders you witness in ministry. I do miracles because I love the people. And my name shall never be left without witness on earth. I said, haven't you ever read that without holiness, no one will see God? It's not the miracles, it is the holiness that comes from God. You started well. Why did you turn? You started with your eyes on me. But as you became more familiar, you turned your eyes on people. You stopped seeking my approval, you began to seek the approval of men. Because men don't know the secrets of your heart, they kept approving you and showing you how they marveled as at your walk. But you didn't care about me. I know your heart. You started well. What turned you away? Why did you take your eyes off me? I want you to know that men do not have heaven. It's only my father who has heaven. And he will judge as a just judge and he will reward every man according to his works the Lord said to me I've, I've looked at you from beginning to the end and I've found nothing acceptable to my father repent forsake everything that you call valuable give up your dreams give up your rights give up anything that you think is valuable and seek my face humble yourself come without any claims come without anything and just humble yourself i tell you it is worthy to inherit salvation eternal life it's enough it's beyond any other thing you can ever compare with it and come that i may have mercy upon you if you could truly repent i will bring you back and i'll restore you and i will make you my mouthpiece I will tell you about my people, my church. How he paid the full price. How he was our atonement. How he paid everything. And how we are set free. How we are supposed to live a completely 
liberated life, redeemed and fulfilled. I said, but my people, my people have turned away from that. My people have chosen to go back to live in their human lives, a human effort, human desires, human wisdom, and human will. And I said, my, and my servants, the preachers of the word, have treaded their souls for worldly things. So they speak from the worldly spirit. They comfort my people in their sins. Instead of calling back my people to me, they tell them it's okay. It's okay to live the way they live. It says many of my people do not know the joy of forgiveness because it has never been, they have never been led into deep repentance and total surrender to me. They have been told it's okay to live in self-will and to do whatever they want. And my heart grieves because I see what the enemy is doing to them. And I'm saying my people are living in utter woundedness. There's a lot of woundedness, there's a lot of pain and bitterness, and therefore people lash out at each other. The people are living in selfishness because of the pain of their lives. And I hurt because my healing is complete. My stripes are able to heal but my people have settled down to live in their woundedness in their bitterness in their hopelessness and they have been told that is all that salvation is about said i paid for everything it's a finished work but they have chosen to live below it and he went on and on and they said but my heart is is grieving because the day of the lord is near and he's saying the day is coming and my heart grieves for my people that people are not ready my people are not anywhere near readiness and my heart grieves for them he said if my people will not anchor their faith in me if they will not completely abandon themselves in me they will not be able to stand the trials of the last days they will compromise, they will yield to the pressures, especially the financial pressures. And there will be a lot of uh, betrayal in the, in the, both in the church and in the world and in the families. There will be lots of pressures that no human being will be able to stand. And says, this is why I'm grieving and hurting deep inside. And I said, this is why I have appeared to you, that I may make you a witness and a voice to the nations go into the nations to my people those who are called by my name and say to them repent and return come back to the lord who died and rose again for you forsake the human ways and surrender yourselves completely to him he spoke then something that he's been speaking to us again in the last few months about fruitfulness and unfruitfulness he said there's so much being done in the church in the name of the Lord that is without fruit so much effort so much investment very little fruit he said it's because it's all being done in human effort and in human ways he says my power is sufficient my spirit is sufficient he said the greatest sin my people have done the most painful of all they have rejected my spirit and is calling us to himself I remember he said to me the day is not a day of joy even to him he says my heart is torn apart when I think of my people who will be pulled away on that day that's why I'm crying out return to me return to me he says I'm sending you don't judge my people don't condemn them tell them I am not condemning them I call them to return to me flee from the wrath that is coming on the day of the Lord flee from the power of powers of darkness that are seeking to take you captive flee from your own self your own carnal nature flee there is refuge in the name of the Lord the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are safe. I want to pray that God will bring revelation to your heart. 
beloved there is a responsibility to overcome he said he who overcomes I will give to sit in my throne just as I overcame and I sat in my father's throne 